Championship leader Max Verstappen had to make his way through the field in Qatar after being given a five-place grid penalty just before the race for ignoring double yellow flags in qualifying. Red Bull saw this as unfair as nothing was mentioned on the race control screen nor on Max's steering wheel. Red Bull have now given their opinion on this. I'm your host Dylan Shelley and first up on Formula World, did Max Verstappen deserve grid penalty in Qatar? Red Bull advisor Helmut Marko began by giving his views on the grid penalty to DAZN. It's ridiculous. The FIA can't organise a decent marshalling system and they shift their incompetence onto the driver. Unbelievable. In a separate interview with Sky Germany, he further expanded on this supposed incompetence. We all get the information on the displays and there was nothing to see. Then there was that one second where the marshal is told to wave yellow and suddenly he picks up the second yellow flag at the moment Verstappen passes. Mercedes' Valtteri Bottas was the other driver to get a penalty. Marco added that he too did not deserve the penalty. That is totally unprofessional and unacceptable in my opinion. Neither driver should have received a penalty. Red Bull team principal Christian Horner agreed with Marco while speaking to Sky Sports. To be honest with you, we're really struggling to understand it because it looks like a complete balls up. The FIA have said play on, the circuit is safe and clear. He further insinuated that the marshal who waved the double yellow did it out of his own accord. It's just a rogue marshal that has stuck a flag out. He's not been instructed to. The FIA have to control their marshals. That's a crucial blow to us in the World Championship. He was later called to the stewards for this comment. Following that, Horner apologised but still held on to his view that it was all very inconsistent and he explained why. My frustration wasn't at marshals. It was at circumstances. Marshals do a wonderful job. If any offence was taken, I apologise, but still frustrating to be in the situation. One car didn't get a yellow flag, another got a single yellow flag, and another a double yellow. That's inconsistent, and I think we can learn from that as a sport. He signed off by taking a jibe at Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff. We've been good with our emotions. I haven't been pointing and swearing at cameras or all that kind of thing. Fast feed. Red Bull's Max Verstappen has explained that racing is not complicated. It has a brake pedal, throttle pedal, and a steering wheel. There's a lot of show around, but I think as drivers, we know what to do, and anything else around that's not really relevant for me, I have to just focus on my job, he added. I feel good. It's going to be a tight battle to the end. I know it's going to be difficult to the end, but I think that's nice. It keeps it exciting, he concluded. For Alpha Tauri's Pierre Gasly, it was a really frustrating day. Both Yuki and myself started in the top 10, but went massively backwards during the race. I was giving everything I had inside the car today, but we were just too slow. Even at the start, I wasn't able to stick with Alonso, he added. So, we tried to go for an aggressive two-stop strategy, but the pace just wasn't there. It didn't work, which is really disappointing, he summed up. Alfa Romeo's Kimi Raikkonen was surprised by the overtakes they could do in Qatar. In the end, it was an entertaining race. I didn't expect much at the beginning, perhaps to be able to race with some people as the car was pretty much the same as yesterday. But we had a good start and then things kept improving as the race went on, he elaborated. I had some good battles and by the end we were catching the McLaren and Alpha Tauri ahead. I think we got everything we could out of this race, he concluded. Williams driver Nicholas Latifi tried to make the one stop work knowing that it would be on the limit with tyres, but they thought they could manage it as a strategy call. The surprising thing was that I had no idea that the tyre was about to suffer a puncture, so unfortunately we weren't able to adjust our strategy in time, he explained. Even once George had to pit again, I still thought that I'd be able to finish the race on my current set as they felt absolutely fine. It's a shame, he summed up. Pirelli head of F1 and car racing Mario Isola has explained that the front left was affected because it is the most stressed tyre, but I don't want to say that this was caused by excessive energy or something like that. First elements that I can share with you is, all the tyres were quite worn, close to 100%. We have cuts on the tyres that we have to understand if they were caused before the loss of pressure or after the loss of pressure. We're waiting for the telemetry data from the teams. It's not a secret that many teams had also damage to chassis to the floor to the wings, and when a tyre is worn, it's less protected from curbs, big impacts, high energy impacts. Then, it can happen that they start losing pressure, and you have to either change the tyre or your flat. Did Max Verstappen deserve the grid penalty in Qatar? Head over to my community page to vote in the poll and let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like this video, feel free to subscribe and check out my others for all the latest in the world of Formula 1.